Studies, Professor Emily Ayajan. We have Director, Directorate of um, Research, Innovation and Partnership, Professor Mutiu Busari. We have um, Director, Agricultural Media Resources and Extension Center, Amrek, Professor Jacob Alawye. We have um, the Dean, Konamrod. The Dean, um, College of Plant Science and Crop Production, Professor Jonathan Atungu, Chairman, Committee of Deans and Director, who is also the um, Dean, College of Animal Science and Livestock Production, Professor Lushi Jishowande. We have uh, on the procession, the University Librarian, Dr. Abayomi Owolabi, the Acting Ambassador, um, Mr. Olukayode Oshinuga, the Acting Registrar, Mrs. Oluwatoyi Morufa Daudu, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Olukayode Akiyemi, the uh, Inaugural Lecturer, Professor Oluwatoyi Abimbola Babalola, and the Vice Chancellor, Professor Olushola Babatunde Kende. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Yeah, the swing guests, ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem, please. Bantam, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is my honor this afternoon to introduce to us the Vice Chancellor of this great citadel of learning, the best university of agriculture in Africa, and the seventh best in the world, Professor Olushola 
Babatunde Kende. Can we give him a round of applause, please? The Vice Chancellor is a fellow of the Genetic Society of Nigeria, fellow of the Agricultural Society of Nigeria, and also fellow of the Institute of Health and Safety. Can we give him a resounding applause, please? Joining the Vice Chancellor this afternoon is the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Olukayo De Akiyemi. With the Vice Chancellor this afternoon is the Acting Registrar, Mrs. Oluwatoyi Morufa Daudu. Can we give her a round of applause, please? We have the Acting Bosser with us this afternoon, Mr. Olukayode Oshinuga. The University Librarian is Dr. Abayomi Owolabi. We have um, the chairman of the Committee of Deans and Directors, who is also the Dean, College of Animal Science and Livestock Production, Professor Olushi Jishowande. Can we give him a round of applause, please? And then we have um, the Dean, College of Plant Science and Crop Production, Professor Jonathan Atungu. And the head of the Department of Soil Science and Land Management, Professor Bolaniwa Senjobi. Thank you very much, greatest Funabites. For the majority of us, or majority of the people who farm, most often after planting, they pray for a better yield. <laughs> and some, they go as far as praying to the gods of the heart for better yield. However, today's inaugural lecturer is to open our eyes to the wonders of nature on soil and the microbes therein. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to address this, let us all welcome from the Department of Soil Science and Land Management, College of Plant Science and Crop Production, Professor Oluwatoi Abimbola Babalola. Professor Babalala is the university's 86th inaugural lecturer, and the title of her lecture is Soil Microbes, Nature's Workforce for Soil Quality Maintenance and Sustenance of Environmental Integrity. With the permission of the Vice Chancellor, I would like to welcome all deans here present, heads of departments and units, and most especially the College of Plant Science and Crop Production in their beautiful attire. Can we give him a round of can you give them a round of applause, please? It is now time to invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lushola Babatude Kende, to give the Vice Chancellor's address. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Academic, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Development in Absentia, the Acting Registrar, the Acting Bursa, the University Librarian, the Dean, College of Plant Science and Crown Production, the Deans of other college, colleges, Students Affairs and Postgraduate School, Directors of Centers and Service Centers, Head, Department of Soil Science and Land Management, heads of all other departments, members of the University Senate, eminent scholars and academics, all non-teaching staff here present, members of the Olorodami and Alaga family, 
invited guests, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, great Funabites, great Funabites. At this juncture, may I request the 86th inaugural lecturer of our university, Professor Mrs. Oluwato Nye Abimbola Babalola to rise and remain standing. Thank you. Thank you. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the 86th edition in the series of the inaugural lectures of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta. This is the 18th in the College of Plant Science and Crop Production, the second female in the history of the college, and the third, and the third from the Department of Soil Science and Land Management. The inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Lua Tony Abimbola Babalola, was born on August 8, 1962, in Elisha, to the family of Mr. Daniel Otito Naye Olonodami and Mrs. Rachel Ebun Olonodami, educational background. Professor Lua Tony Babalola attended primary schools in Kaduna and Kogi states from 1970 to 1976. She proceeded to Onyo Baptist High School, the Jagbo between 1976 and 1981 for her secondary education. She was appointed the food prefect in her penultimate year in school. You ask, why not in food science and technology? Thereafter, she proceeded to University of Ilorin for her BSc degree between 1981 and 1985, and her MSc between 1987 and 1988 in microbiology, and later Amadou Bello University, Zaria, for her PhD between 1991 and 1997. Professor Babalola was put there to work at the then Biological Science Department, Federal University of Technology, Akure, for her National Youth Service between 1985 and 1986. In April 1990, she was employed as an assistant lecturer by the Department of Soil Science, Amadou Bello University, Zaria. Professor Lua Tony Babalola joined the services of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, as lecturer one in September 2001, and rose through the ranks to become a professor in October 2012. She took up sabbatical positions at Crawford University, Igbesa, Ogun State, between, 19, between 2013 and 2014, and Forestry Research Institute of Nigeria, Idishin Ibadan, between 2021 and 2022. Professor Babalola was the acting head, Department of Soil Science and Land Management, from 2008 to 2010, and the substantive head of the department from 2014 to 2016. She has been a member of the University Senate since 2008 and also served various university committees such as Student Disciplinary Committee, Equipment Maintenance Committee, College Promotion Boards, Mock Accreditation Committee to many departments, Committee to determine the need for continuation of part-time program or otherwise, Senate Business Committee, and she was the chairperson, Committee on Determination of FUNAP Furniture Needs in 2018. Professor Luato in Babalola was the external examiner for BSc and MSc in Agronomy, Soil Science Option, Department of Agronomy, University of Ibadan, 2017 to 2021, and for the MSc Soil Science Program, Department of Crop Production, Olabisi on Obanjo University, Agowoye, from 2021 to date. She has served as external examiner for master's and PhD degrees at the University of Ibadan, your state, Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife Oshun State, Federal University of Technology, Akure, in Ondo State, and the Federal University of Technology, Mino, Niger State, among others. She has also been invited to assess candidates for promotion into the professorial cadre at Taisholani University of Education, Jebode, University of Ilorin, Kwara State, Lagos State University, 
and Landmark University in Omoaronkwara State. Mrs. Babalola belongs to several professional associations, such as Science Association of Nigeria, Soy Science Society of Nigeria, Nigerian Society of Microbiology, Organic Agriculture and Tertiary Institutions in Nigeria, Third World Organization of Women in Science, International Mycology Society, and Biochar Initiative in Nigeria. And also, she's a registered soil scientist with registration number RSS 034. So she's not a quack soil scientist. Research interests. The research interests of Professor Babalola are microbial enhancement of plant access from phosphate rock, biological nitrogen fixation, sustainable soil organic matter management, harnessing microbial activities to improve soil health and crop production, soil microbial ecology, bioremediation of polluted soils, and very recently, microbial ecology in forest soils. She's a reviewer for many national and international journals, including Nigerian Journal of Soil Science, Nigerian Agricultural Journal, Journal of Agricultural Research, Journal of Biological Engineering, and the Journal of Agricultural Science, Cambridge, as well as Bioresource Technology Journal. Professor Babalola has to her credit over 70 published articles in national and international journals and conference proceedings. She has supervised over 100 BA Greek, 20 MA Greek, and 10 PhD graduates. <laughs> Professor Mrs. Babalola is married to Mr. Benjamin A. Babalola, and the marriage is blessed with three children. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Luatoin Abimbola Babalola from the Department of Soil Science and Land Management, College of Plant Science and Crop Production, to present our inaugural lecture titled, Soil Microbes, Nature's Workforce for Soil Quality Maintenance and Sustenance of Environmental Integrity. Thank you very much for your attention. God bless you all. You are welcome. The Deputy Vice Chancellor. The Deputy, the Vice Chancellor, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Deve Development, the Acting Registrar, the Acting Bursar, the University Librarian, the Dean College of Plant Science and Crop Production, Deans of other colleges, Student Affairs and Postgraduate School. Directors of Centers and Services, Heads department, Head Department of Soil Science and Land Management, Heads of all other departments, Members of University Senate, Eminent Scholars and Academics, Non-Teaching Staff, Members of Olorunda Mialaga Family, led by the Oloria B of the family, Major General DOS Oshanupi, invited guests, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, great Funabite. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I feel greatly honored and privileged for the opportunity to present my humble com contribution to knowledge in this 86th FUNAB inaugural lecture series, the 18th in College of Plant Science and Crop Production, and the third in the Department of Soil Science and Land Management. The lecture focuses on the ecological services of soil microbes and attempts to harness these services for the improvement of soil health and productivity, as well as environmental health. 
the presentation will be according to the out, this outline. How did I get here? In 1990, I was uh, I employed as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Soil Science, Amadou Bello University, uh, Zaria. At that time, I was armed with a BSc and MSc degrees in, with BSc and MSc degrees in microbiology. On my resumption at ABU, I was told that I was not useful to the department as I was, that I needed to go and register for PhD, and which I did immediately. The PhD actually started on officially in 1990, but officially in 1991. And that PhD started with, I was to, supposed to start at 200 level. It was like going in as a direct, a student, a direct entry student. However, I was saved that ordeal because it was, that was Professor Gordon's course at that time, plant physiology. But I was saved from that ordeal because I had done plant physiology in my, at my undergraduate uh, years. So I started at 300 level with soil physics, soil chemistry, soil microbiology, all of those courses, and took all the relevant and core courses at the undergraduate level, not just to go, not to sit in, to write exams and pass at least at 50%, because it is only then that it will be, they will be recorded in my uh, records as satisfactory. They did not count with CGPA or anything, but I must satisfactory have uh, passed those courses. And I did all the master, the, ma the core master courses too. And then started the PhD, which was also by coursework and by research. So it was a lot, that was why I started in 1991 officially and ended in 1997. It was a very long program. And it was like doing the BSc, the MSc in one long scoop. And at the end of that program, I felt good that I had, yes, I am a soil scientist, and there was no way that I can feel inferior to anybody in this field. So I was, I am a soil, I am a microbiologist and also a soil scientist. So on completion of that program, I expanded my research focus to include legume, nutrition, nitrogen fixation, and all others. And then 2021, I transferred, 2001, I transferred my appointment to a FUNAB, where I further expanded my uh, research to include sustainable soil organic matter management, because I noted that here, here in the south, that farmers do not have access to fertilizer. It's either they don't use it at all or they use very quantity, very small quantity. So I saw the need to explore the management of uh, organic, uh, organic carbon so that the soil can be more productive. And then I also look at microbial ecology and others. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Permit me to validate the topic of today from the scripture. The earth, land, which drinketh the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. Hebrews 6, 7. And the topic, if I may go back to it, is... Soil microbes, nature's workforce for soil quality maintenance and sustenance of environmental integrity. So now looking at this land that the scripture is talking about. So the question to us today is who dressed that land? 
and according to that scripture, God. But for the purpose of this scientific presentation, we will take nature. And then how is it dressed? I believe it is not by the use of uh, urea or NPK or all the other synthetic fertilizer because we continue to realize that those have problems. They create problems for the soil. So, and the nature's way is always perfect. And so the dress, how it is dressed, is the purpose of this lecture. And over the years, my research has been fo focused on this subject. Definition of terms. Soil microbes are found in the soil. They are soil, uh, soil organisms. Organisms that are too small to be seen with naked eyes. And we have many of them in the soil. Actually, in, depending on how much organic matter is in that soil, we can have as much as one billion in just one gram of soil. And so they are there carrying out their activities and their activities, as we note, is beneficial to soil management and agricultural productivity and environmental quality. And so when we try to manage the activities or even introduce um, other microorganisms into the soil, they tend to also further enhance crop productivity and environmental integrity. And then soil quality. Soil quality is a component of the three components of environmental quality. The others are air and water quality. While air and water quality are measured by their degree of pollution, soil is more complex and it is beyond just pollution because Apart from the fact that soil also has the liquid, the solid, and the gaseous phases, it also has a multifunctional, uh, is, a, is a multifunctional material that is, is used for more purposes than air and uh, water. And so, because of this, the definition is broader. And it is defined as the capacity of soil to function within ecosystem boundaries to sustain biological productivity, maintain environmental quality, and promote plant and animal health. When it is being considered as an environment, based on its quality in the environment, it is also um, from that environmental perspective, it is, defined, it is defined as the capacity of the soil to promote the growth of plants, protect watershed by regulating the infiltration of and partitioning of precipitation and prevent water and air pollution by buffering pot potential pollutants such as agrochemicals, organic waste, industrial chemicals, and so on. So soil quality can both be assessed for agroecosystem where the aim is essentially for productivity. And it can also be assessed for natural ecosystem where the aim are for maintenance of environment and also biodiversity conservation. Importance of biological quality. Uh, more popularly, soil physical and chemical properties are measured as, uh, as indices of uh, soil quality. However, biological qualities are also crucial. Number one, first, because the changes that is noticed in the chemical and physical qualities are driven by activities of the biological population of the soil. And also, because of the sensitive nature of these 
organisms. They are living organisms. So they are sensitive to management. And because they are so sensitive, uh, they, are, they respond faster to any changes. And therefore, as indices of soil quality, it is rapid and it is fast. And then, more recently, researchers are beginning to advocate for soil suppressiveness. And soil suppressiveness is the property of a soil to naturally reduce disease incidence. And it is of major interest because soil itself can reduce the incidences of disease by, because they actually produce microorganisms within the soil, they produce materials that are antagonistic to the soil. And then the soil itself has a total property based on the microbiological, uh, the chemical and the physiological, the physical property to also suppress disease. And this is also of major importance. So uh, telling us or letting us know that soil uh, biological quality is an important uh, soil quality indicator. And the microbes and the environment, uh, environmental integrity. Microbes, they are uh, everywhere, like I said, and they are very active in the environment. And more importantly, the they, 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 they are able to, they, they are able to, to process the major, the major elements that constitute life. Elements like carbon, like uh, oxygen, like nitrogen, like phosphorus. These are processed by microorganisms. And so they are very important. Micro, apart from their, their role in decomposition, they, many bacteria symbiotically, symbiotically and asymbiotically are known to fix atmospheric nitrogen and convert them to forms that are available to plants, thereby removing uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere and bringing them to the soil for the plant to use. And by the way, nitrogen is the major nut uh, limiting nutrient to crops. And, and they are also able to decompose organic and cellular materials once those organic matter uh, uh, arrive in the soil. And when they do so, they convert them to humus, which can be stored in the soil for millennia, and thereby removing this material from the, that has been fixed through uh, photosynthesis, remove them from the atmosphere, and then store them in the soil, which then uh, help to reduce greenhouse gases and also uh, mitigate the catastrophic effects of global warming. My contribution to knowledge. Uh, sir, my vice chancellor, sir. My contribution to knowledge uh, cuts across microbial activities in enhancement of peace uh, access to insoluble sources by plants, maintenance of soil health, improved crop production, and restoration of environmental integrity. And in the course of my career, I have collaborated with several, several colleagues in the academia, different, from different disciplines. I carried out studies on microbiological enhancements of peer release from Sokoto and Ogun phosphate rock. P phosphate rock is a mineral rock, is rock, deposits of rock that are found across the country. However, applying them directly to the soil, even though it contains about 30% of P, total P, but only 10% of the total P is actually available to crops. And therefore, the, how to convert them to form that plants can use is a major concern. And I, in view of this, I was able to isolate some microorganisms that are able to release pea from the soil in field soil. They were isolated from field soil. And 
among these microorganisms, I selected two fun fungi and, and three bacteria. Applied them to the soil, applied phosphate, uh, phosphate rock, and also planted soya bean. And we observed that the application of these microorganisms increase all the parameters of the plants, including grain yield. And two, two, especially two among these micro, microorganisms, the rhizo, uh, rhizopod species and Pseudomonas strata. So uh, moving on from there, we try to look at the pattern and the incidence of these phospho phosphate solubilizing microorganisms in the soil. And we demonstrated that a total of 44 phosphorus solubilizing bacteria and 21 phosphorus solubilizing fungi were in the soil, and that they released P ranging from 10.5 to 20.9 micrograms per gram soil for the bacteria isolate and 10.1 to 28.9 microgram per soil for the fungi isolate. And we also noted that for the bacteria isolates, majority of them had their P, peak P release at one week of incubation, while the fungi had their peak P release at uh, four to six weeks of incubation. And the total P that was released was higher for fungi than for bacteria. We also tried some other materials, uh, especially the abuscular mycorrhiza fungi. We combined them with the application of phosphate rock with and some in some treatments, no application of phosphate rock. And we, we noted that combination of glomus mose and a glomus mose or glomus desarticola with phosphate rock produce higher parameters of the uh, of the plants, including N and P uptake. And that the uptake of P in this uh, combination were comparable to SSP, which is the conventional fertilizer. We also uh, to, went to ahead to also, uh, instead of soya bean, we tried this material, the uh, fungi and the bacteria species on maize cultivation. And the difference here is that while in soya bean, the response of soya bean was immediate, but it was not so for maize. Maize responded at the second cropping cycle, not at the first. And we attributed this to the acidic zone of soya bean, as the acidic zo root zone. The root zone of the soya bean is acidic. And because it is so, it could acidulate the PR, that's the phosphate rock, and make it available faster than maize. And then we also looked at ogun phosphate rock. Ogun phosphate rock is deposited at Oshoshu around Ifo local government area. And we, I tried to cultivate three varieties of cowpea and maize, comparing it with SSP. And we saw that all the parameters, all the parameters were comparable with ogun rock phosphate, ogun phosphorus, ogun rock phosphate, and SSP. They were comparable, but both of them gave higher uh, parameters than control. And then in 2007, we, on, we used ogun phosphate rock to fortify soil. 
and inocul inoculated some 31 fungi species under incubation studies. And we reported that peer release ranged from 1.9 to 6.25 milligram per 100 mil. And we also showed that nine of those 31 fungi, fungi species were able to produce organic acid, ranging from fumaric acid to acetic acid, gluconic acid, lactic acid, and so on. And we, I also carried out studies on other biofertilizers where I used, I uh, looked at this, if there was any synergistic effect between abuscular mycorrhiza and bradyrhizobium jacponicum uh, under the, in the production of soya bean. And I reported, we reported that, uh, that Glomus mose interacted well or better with bradyrhizobium than Glomus desarticulum. And in all the mycorrhiza inoculation, the, all the parameters, including grain yield, were comparable, were even higher than SSP. And then we also looked at other legume nutrition. I, 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 I reported, or we reported maize yields under different legume maize uh, intercrop over a period of three years. And we reported that uh, only 20% increase of maize yield was noticed in sole maize over a period of three years. While for maize granite intercrop, 95% increase was reported. For maize soya bean, 92.8% increase was reported. Maize cowpea intercrop, intercrop we reported 98.4%. And we attributed this improvement to soil physical and chemical parameters that, were, that improved due to amount of ground cover produced by the different legumes and nitrogen addition to soil from legume nitrogen fixation. We also carried out studies on abuscular mycorrhiza fungi in uh, association with rice. We started by carrying out a survey in Oyo, Oshu, Ekitin, and Niger states. And we reported that, that Abuscular Mycorrhiza Fungi Association on the fields were significantly influenced by varieties of rice grown on each field. And that AMF spores and cancer were more abundant and more diverse in Ogun states. And this indicating that myco, this mycorrhiza had pre preferences with the variety that they associated with. And then furthermore, in 2020, we demonstrated that Ofada, a local variety commonly uh, cultivated in Ogun State, IT, and then ITA50, an improved vari variety developed by African rats, had high propensity for AMF colonization, high AMF spore density, high rhizosphere at their uh, roots, high diversity of the spores, and then a strong relationship uh, between spore density and uh, AMF colonization. And in 2003, we reported under stress and unstressed condition that Glomus etunicatum 
and Lomus interradiasis were able to increase the population and the, the diversity, the population, and the activities of indigenous mycorrhiza in the soil. And this led to enhanced biochemical, physiological, and nutritional properties of the rice and uh, eventually the yield of the rice. Even though moisture stress had a negative effect on maize yield, inoculation of Globus mose or Globus etunicatum reduced this negative impact by 52% and 24% respectively under moderate water stress. While under severe water stress, it reduced the, the negative impact by 216% and 158% respectively. We also carried out studies on microbial remediation of contaminated soil. I, in 2012, I looked at some materials, AMF, uh, poultry manure, NPK, and compared it with control where no amendment was applied on uh, spent engine oil contaminated soil. And I reported that this material, all of this material, especially MF, AMF, was able to significantly reduce the contamination of this material on the soil and even on the plants that was cropped. Then we looked at, and then we, in 2019, we isolated eight indigenous hydro carbon degrading microorganisms belonging to the genera Pseudomonas, Bacillus, and Staphylococcus from oil polluted sites in selected local government areas in Ogun State. The isolates were evaluated for their biodegradative abilities. And we reported that the potential degradation capacity of the isolates ranged from 56.9 to 73.9%. And we went on to carry out studies on mining sites. The location is a, a place called uh, can I, can I, Amagu Enyingba in Ebony State. And the, in this place, they mine all sorts of heavy metal. And we tried to, we carried out uh, analysis of farmlands around this mining site. And we reported that the level of heavy metal in this farmlands were higher than the FAO permissible limit. And we, de we then went on to try and see how we can reduce the level of this heavy metal in these polluted soils. And we used Boucher, we use AMF, and we saw, we noted that Boucher and AMF were able to reduce the uh, level of this heavy metal in the soil, particularly lead and zinc, but more for zinc. And we noted also that dentist, dentist Kutata Niger, because of its high Spot, the high spots that were encountered and the frequency of the encounter. We reported that it probably is the major uh, bowel remediator on, the, on these sites. And we reported also that these materials, uh, especially Boucher, was able to reduce the amount of these heavy metals that were translocated to the shoot and the root and ultimately to the uh, grain. However, we advised or suggested that maize or any food crop should not be grown on those sites. Rather, that timber should be used as 
phytoremediation, for phytoremediation with the application of AMF and uh, voucher, especially at three tons per hectare. The soil was also the level of lead in the soil using voucher, three tons per hectare reduced by 12.11%, cadmium reduced by 65.98%, nickel by 30.04%. We carried out studies on microbial ecology and see how the, the activities, the, my, the ecological activities of micro, micro, microbes, how it, uh, how it affects crop production. Uh, Ola Santo and Babalola 2007 investigated bacteria population in the micro sites or micro environment of monoculture melon and melon intercropped with maize and cassava. And we reported that intercropping melon increased rhizosphere fungi and bacteria by, uh, of maize by 10 to 20 percent and cassava by 38 to 48 percent. And consequently, decreased soil temperature, uh, soil density, and increased soil moisture, and also increased the total soil productivity. Another study that was carried out showed, uh, demonstrated that applying compost would affect the level of biological properties in the soil, the first or the second year. Some of those uh, organisms had their population increase after one year, others after two years. However, it was noted that higher population, we reported higher population under best care, a local variety than the improved variety, uh, suggesting that very, Variety adoption to soil due to long years of cultivation involves a more complex soil plant interaction. And then we also tried to opt, uh, the optimization of microbial activity under organic farming using compost. And at uh, three, two, uh, four levels of compost application, we saw that the population of bacteria and fungi and their activities increased uh, and they increase uh, their increase also led to increase in growth and yield properties of the uh, of tomato and then we also reported that microbial population correlated most significantly to growth and yield parameters at six weeks after application of compost than at three weeks after application. This was uh, attributed to optimum release of nutrients to plants through microbial process seen at this time, which is also the period of highest vegetative and reproductive development of tomato crop. And consequently, giving a significant, having a significant impact on the yield. And then we carried out studies on organic matter. In 2000, I looked at various organic material to see uh, their effects on the soil when, after they have been cropped to maize and to cow pea. And we reported that their effect on the soil was significantly higher under cow pea than under maize. And all the materials gave higher parameters than control. And then we also carried out, uh, used other material, and we carried out, uh, we measured the, my, the soil properties and also the plant properties. And we reported that all of these materials were able to increase the soil properties. However, plant properties were significantly 
uh, increased by NPK. Uh, so also showing that the impact of NPK on plants is higher because of faster and higher availability of nutrients to plants, even though this material had higher and significantly, significant um, impact on the soil. And then we also uh, carried out the, we reported that impact of compost was higher in, on soil biological properties and chemical properties after one or two years of application. Consequently, also improving the soil physical properties like bulk density, total porosity, aggregate stability were all positively uh, improved after two years of composting, compost application, and especially under the uh, local variety. We demonstrated that consequent to microbial activities that parameters, uh, chemical parameters increase uh, in soil after the application of compost. And this led to significantly higher growth and yield of tomatoes in the corresponding soil at first and second cropping cycles in, two, in the two varieties, showing that apart from the soil and the plant benefiting immediately from the application of this compost, it also had residual effects. Even at one year after application, the effect was still very high on plant productivity. And then we also looked at a leafy biomass of Albizia, Lebec, and Pachia biglobosa. We incorporated these two materials into the soil and we planted maize. And it was reported that maize, it was reported that maize grain and other parameters increased under Albizia than under Pakia. And we went ahead to find out why is it so. And we noted that Pakia, the, the, the content of nitrogen, carbon, lignin, and uh, were higher in Albizia than in Pakia. Carbon to nitrogen ratio was higher. Polyphenol was also higher. And this led to higher uh, yield, uh, index, yield index. And we also noted that decomposition of Albizia was also higher. And the, uh, the decomposition index, index was also higher, uh, which led to the better performance of Albizia Lebec than uh, Papakia biglobosa. Uh, even the soil property, also uh, the soil also benefited from the Albizia Lebec more than it did under Pakia biglobosa. We also carried out studies on whether it is the ashing and on ashing uh, animal manures. We look at three animal manures. That's the cattle manure, goat manure, and then poultry manure. We ashed at them, and we, those that were not ashed, the, the normal ones were also applied. And we reported that pH and electrical con conductivity, even at two weeks after planting, was already higher after application the pH and the electrical conductivity was higher with hashed manure than on hashed manure. And that N and P and other, um, other uh, nutrient releases were also higher, they especially in the incubation and in the greenhouse, but not as significant in the uh, green in the field. And therefore, we suggested that uh, it might be more efficient to, for, to use ash manure under controlled environment like greenhouse than using it in the field because the field is more complex and a lot of things can happen to the ash 
manure that will not allow it, make it available to the crop. And then we also look at the, uh, the use of compost, fortified compost. Compost fortified by bactericidal plant materials like mango leaves, uh, neem leaves, and siam weed, ewe akintola. And we use them to fortify compost in, and try to use this material to combat the, speck, the leaf spots and speck diseases of tomato. And we reported that Ralsoton, the population of Ralsotonia solanine serum was reduced by 4.78 times 10 raised to power 7 and percent severe, severity in the, sorry, in the soil. And mean wilt in the in, uh, incidence was also reduced by 31.35 percent, percent severity index by 22.9 percent, and in yield were increased by 50 percent. Disease inten inten uh, intensity index in the variety, uh, the local variety, the improved variety was reduced by 57.35 in bacterial leaf spot and 42.78 percent in bacterial leaf speck. Conclusion, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. My research findings have demonstrated that soil microorganisms are nature's gifts to humankind for sustainable agricultural productivity and environment. Their activities are wide and far-reaching. Evolutionary studies have clearly shown that the evolution of plants from aquatic to terrestrial species was largely possible because of mycorrhizal fungi. Soil scientists are also conversant with the fact that microorganisms make up a very important component of organisms that are regarded as one of the five factors of soil formation. Microorganisms are usually the first colonizer of habitats devoid of organic matter. Their activities prepare the habitat for eventual growth of plants, which leads to increase in organic matter and gradual increase in the population of plants and other my organisms. Many soil processes that are of major importance to agricultural soil productivity are carried out by soil microorganisms. Organic agriculture is a crop production system which excludes the use of all synthetic compounds as inputs, and it is perceived as a more sustainable food production system, a source of healthier and more nutritious food, and contributes largely to healthier environment. Soil microorganisms are the major agents of productivity in this self-sustaining system, and organic farmers are aware that farm activities must be tailored towards providing optimum conditions for these microbes to thrive. It is therefore imperative to make deliberate and determined efforts in protecting these microbes and maximizing their positive effect on food produ production. It is known that climate change and some anthropogenic activities are adversely affecting the existence of some organisms. Established soil microbiologists believe that many soil Many useful soil microbes are already extinct or endangered. Recommendations. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. I commend the effort of FUNAB in creating conducive environment for research by providing research facilities and assisting staff to obtain research funding, thereby making research at research activities attractive on the campus. However, a lot still needs to be done with regards to providing modern teaching and research facilities such as well-equipped laboratories, research firm, farm and irrigation facilities, availability of needed agricultural inputs and support staff. There is also the need to intensify efforts 
on obtaining research funding. Many of our research have demonstrated high agricultural potential, potentials of some materials. However, many of these materials have not been packaged into adoptable technologies that can be made available to farmers. It is therefore the need, there is therefore the need for a more applied research to translate successful basic research into inputs that farmers can use. There is also the need for strong collaboration between researchers and agricultural extensionists. Number two, policy on agricultural practices in Nigeria should promote sound management of organic matter. Soil organic matter is termed the lifeblood of soil. And it is key to realizing optimum productivity of the soil. Therefore, it is imperative that crop production systems that promote high levels of organic matter in the soil should be encouraged through policy formulation. Number three, there is need for government support for organic farming. Organic agriculture requires a more deliberate and concerted effort from all stakeholders to encourage farmers' adoption and participation. This production system tends to promote soil health, ecosystem services, food safety, and environmental health. Conservation number four, conservation agriculture should be encouraged and promoted. Farmers should be encouraged to embrace soil conservation practices such as conservation tillage, cro cover cropping, crop protection, crop rotation, intercropping, and soil erosion control. These practices tend to protect and preserve the soil resources, thereby enhancing their contributions to soil productivity. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, acknowledgement. I give all the glory, honor, and adoration to God. It is because of his grace that I can stand before you and give this lecture today. He has been my helper and strong support throughout my journey in life. He alone deserves all the praise and thanksgiving. I am grateful to all the vice chancellors that I have worked with in FUNAB, beginning with Professor J.A. Okoje, Professor I.F. Adu, Professor O.O. Balogun, Professor O.B. Oyewole, Professor F.K. Salako, and Professor O.B. Kende, in whose tenure I am presenting this inaugural lecture. I am also grateful for the support of all the deans of the College of Plant Science and Crop Produ Production that I have worked with. Emeritus Professor M.C. Adetunji, Professor F.O. Olasotan, Professor J.G. Bodunde, Professor M.O. Atayeshe, and Professor J.J. Atungu. I acknowledge the support of past and present heads of Department of Soil Science and Land Management. Professor F.K. Salako, Dr. Victoria Iboni, Professor J.K. Adesodun, Professor C.O. Adejuigbe, and Professor B.A. Senjobi. I want to recognize and acknowledge people who had contributed at different stages of my education, beginning with Dr. and Mrs. S.A. Sayomi, who were my principal and vice principal at different times in at Onyu Baptist High School, Ijagbo Offer. I am also grateful to my lecturers at the Department of Biological Sciences, University of Ilori, most especially Professor R.O. Alabi and Professor M.O. Fawale, who supervised my BSc project and MSc thesis, respectively. I am always grateful to my PhD supervisors, late Dr. J.K. Adu, and Professor V. O. Chude. I am also grateful for the friendship and support of many colleagues in ABU, including Professors B. A. Raji, I. Y. Amapu, 
esi odun ze i o oyin lo laje o ogun wole ambidi tafa i gratefully acknowledge the mentorship that i received from professor jj owonubi professor v o chude professor sto lagoke emeritus professor mc adetunji professor f o olasotan professor jj bodunde and late professor ag ojanuga I am fortunate to work with hardworking and like-minded colleagues in the Department of Soil Science and Land Management. In the persons of Professor J.K. Adesodun, Professor C.O. Adeju Igwe, Professor J.O. Aziz, Professor A.A. Shore Tire, Professor J.A. Ajiboye, Professor M.A. Busari, Dr. F.A. Olowo Kere, Dr. Adebanke, Olubode, Mrs. Balajitani, Dr. Anthony Sobore, Wale Bankole, Lanre Ologunde, and Olufemi Oshinuga. I also, I have also enjoyed the support of colleagues, including Professor Aro Piton, Professor A.R. Kokwala, Professor V.I.O. Olowe, Professor P.O. Akintokun, Professor A.K. Akintokun, Professor O.R. Afolabi, Professor A.M. Badebo, Professor C.O. Adeofun, Professor Biola Philip, Professor Elin Bodunde, Professor Bolanle Akere Doluale, and Professor I.A. Ayela Agbe. I also recognize the support of colleagues at the Department of Microbiology, Crawford University, Salegbe, and Department of Soil and Tree Nutrition, Forestry Research Institute of Nigeria, who I worked with while I was on sabbatical leave at those institutions. I wish to acknowledge all my students. I have been fortunate to supervise many hardworking, diligent, and well-focused students in B Agric, M Agric, and PhD programs. Some of them are lecturers in the university systems other, and other tertiary institutions. Some are working in research institutes and other sectors while others are pursuing higher degrees. I want to specially mention Dr. M. O. Adibu, Dr. Lalade Agbenyegbe, Dr. A. A. Olubode, Dr. I. G. Okoro, Dr. N. A. Oyebanji, Dr. A. C. Uthman, Mr. Idris Adeamo, and Mrs. Tony Fabumi. I am grateful for the fellowship and support of the vicar and members of my church, Zakio Zadeyemi, Adewumi Adeyemi Memorial Anglican Church, Alakia Ibadan. Members of my family, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I wish to affectionately recognize and appreciate members of my family who have made indelible marks on my life, beginning with my late father, Mr. Daniel Otito Naye Olorundami. In his lifetime, he was a very respectable nurse who worked with international organizations like UNICEF and others. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I want to use this opportunity to pay tribute to my late mother, Mami, Chief Rachel Ebunolorundami, the Yaijo of St. Paul Anglican Church, Ekiria Day, Kogi State. Because my father died very, very early in my life, Mami stepped up early to play the roles of both parents. She was the breadwinner, the disciplinarian, the encourager, the motivator, the prayer warrior, and my role model. My mother made a lot of sacrifices to see me through the different stages of my life and education. She was the only one I could depend on for anything and for everything. And she did all that she could do without holding back. And I owe her loads of gratitude. She passed away in June 2023 at the age of 96 years. I wish to acknowledge the support of my brothers and sisters. Mr. Ajibola Olorundami, retired Major General Chief, JOS Oshanupi, let Mrs. Bide Miaro, Mrs. Florence Ayodele Oolabi, 
MS or Lightroom or Kelorum Dami, Mr. and Mrs. Olufemi Faleke, Dr. Mrs. Olubukola Ayeni, and retired Justice Dr. Alaba Omolaye Ajileye. Thank you all. Your being there makes a world of difference. Uh, the picture that is on the screen is of my sister, Mrs. Florence Ayodele Olabi, fondly called Antiayo. Because she could not make it to this inaugural lecture from US, she graciously and generously tried to compensate me by offering to, to fund the uh, entertainment for this inaugural lecture. Thank you. <laughs> I am grateful for the support of my nieces and nephews, particularly Mr. and Mrs. Shewa Wodele, Mr. and Mrs. Akonde Lawa, Mr. Kule Olabi, numerous cousins and others, members of my immediate family. I am also grateful for the support of my husband, and children, uh, and my children and their spouses. Temitokwe and Mureni Keji Babalola, Tolulokwe and Abiodun Babalola, as well as Oluwa Tosin and Olashidle Alowole. You guys have always been great. Thank you. And I'm also grateful to my grandchildren, Ine Oluwa and Kiki Okwe Babalola. I wish to acknowledge the efforts of the University Public Relations Unit, the publications and ceremonial committees in making this event a huge success. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> so God alone be all the glory. Please join me in singing this short chorus. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With all the breath that I have able. I will sing of the goodness of God. Please, one more time. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With all the breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of Congratulations. Congratulations. Please have your seat. Please have your seat. Please stand. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that Professor Mrs. Oluwa Toyin Abimbola Babalola has delivered the 86th inaugural lecture very well. And please, a round of applause for her once again. Ma, the Federal University of Agriculture, Abiyokuta, presents you this award of honor. Professor Luatun Yabin Bola Babalola, as the 86th inaugural lecturer of the university, dated this day, Wednesday, 21st February 2024. Congratulations, man. And then um, before you leave, ma, well, as a university, we cooperated with nature's workforce and got the best out of them. And so we were able to produce these um, food products. And on behalf of the university, I want to give this to you also. 
Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on that occasion, we have come to the end of the 86th inaugural lecture of our university. We so much want to appreciate everyone who has been a part of this lecture. But please, before we disperse, permit me to recognize the following people, especially guests of the inaugural lecturer who had come mostly out of the state to join us at this lecture. Please thank with me Major General Julius Oshano Queen, retired, former GOC. Can you stand up for recognition, sir? You are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Former GOC, Army Formations, and the former Commander Brigade Guard. Thank you very much, sir. We also had within our midst Honorable Justice Professor Alaba Ajileye of National Open University of Nigeria. You are welcome, Prof. Sir. Thank you so much for joining us. We also have within our midst Colonel H. O. K. Okwala. Colonel Okwala is there. Thank you, sir, for coming. We have Dr. Mrs. Bukola Olono Damia Yeni, a director in the National Assembly of Abuja. You are welcome, man. Thank you. Dito, we have Chief Billy Olon Odami, who is the brother of the inaugural lecturer, Chief Billy Olon Odami. We have Chief S.O.K. Faleke Arotile, an in-law to the inaugural lecturer, Mrs. Doris Faleke. Mrs. Doris Faleke, madam, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Engineer Lawal Mohammed, Engineer Lawal Mohammed, Mrs. Fumi Lawal also. Thank you for coming. Mrs. Ronke Okeyemi, you are welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Ade Kunle Ade Adeleye, the general editor of the Nation newspaper. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And we also have, I want to acknowledge the presence of Venerable Isaac Olushche Gwala Tinwa of Zakios Ade Umi Yemi Memorial Anglican Church, Ibadan. Thank you so much for joining us. We welcome other external members who are here with us. We thank you for joining us. Of course, I want to specially also appreciate all members of the university senate for joining us but permit me to welcome and also thank the immediate past vice chancellor of our university the sixth substantive vice chancellor of our university professor felix kola walisa lako a soil scientist of repute <laughs> we thank you for the parapo we thank you for the parapo. Professor Salako is a fellow of the Soil Science Association of Nigeria. You can understand. We also welcome Professor Adi Eniku a former acting vice chancellor of the university. Thank you so very much for coming. We have also on that road the former deputy vice chancellor academic, the immediate past deputy vice chancellor academic, Professor Christian Obiora, Ondo Boisi, EKOB. And also, I have my own friend here too, the former Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, Professor Clement Olabin Joadeofu. Professor Adeofu, you are welcome. You know, the inaugural lecturer mentioned that she has received a lot of support from the deans of the College of Plant Science and Crop Production. Let me arrange them serially. We have in our midst the fourth, I think, yes, yeah, she should be the fourth, the fourth dean of the College of Plant Science and Crop Production. Please listen. Professor Fawcett Olagunsoye Olasoton is hiding somewhere there. Professor Olasoton, you are welcome. You know, I'm listing the deans of Copeland in succession, and I don't know, but for your information, Professor Olasoton handed over to Professor Obi Kende, and he has been supporting the inaugural lecturer too. And then Professor Obi Kende handed over to Professor J Jacob. Yes, Jacob. It's a very real name. Jacob Goke Bodunde, J.G. Bodunde, a former dean of the College of Plant Science and Crop Production. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. And Professor Jacob Bodunde handed over to Professor Emu Atayeshe, who is hiding somewhere there. <laughs> Professor Emu Atayeshe, Muftar Olaoye Atayeshe, you are welcome. And then Professor Olaoye Atayeshe handed over to Professor J.J. Atungu. Those are the deans of Copeland. Sorry for that parapo too. I hope you allow it. Thank you so very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want to appreciate all members of Senate, all professors here present. Thank you very much. Um, all staff of this university, academic and non-teaching, thank you for coming to witness the inaugural lecture 
of Professor Mrs. Oluwato Yabimbola Babalola, the 86th inaugural lecturer of our university. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Whatever has got a beginning must surely have an end. We are gradually dragging the curtain. Can we all see? Can we, see? Can we sit down, sir, please, sir? Yes, sir. We're gradually drawing the curtain for the its sixth inaugural lecture of this great citadel of learning. The announcements, please. Um, the academic staff are to go through the my right hand here, the exit A, while the guest of the inaugural lecturer should go through the exit B. The um, uh, other guests should remain in the hall, while students should also remain in the gallery. The, um, the procession will file out in the reverse order through the central hall. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may we all rise for the funeral anthem, followed by the second stanza of the national anthem, which is the national prayer. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Please let's remain standing until the procession files out in the reverse order. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've all come to the end of the 86th inaugural lecture of this great style of learning. The inaugural lecturer was Professor Uluwatoi Abimbola Babalala, a professor of soil microbiology 
And the title of the lecture was Soil Microbes Nature's work Workforce for Soil Quality Maintenance and Sustenance of Environmental Integrity. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate all our guests that have come from uh, far and near. We especially appreciate our leaders in this um, great um, university, ably led by the immediate past vice chancellor, the sixth substantive vice chancellor of our university, Professor Felix Kolawale Salako, fellow of the Soil Science Society of Nigeria and also fellow of the Agricultural Society of Nigeria. We appreciate the former acting vice chancellor, Professor Lolade Nikomei. We appreciate the immediate past deputy vice chancellor academic, Professor Christian Ikeobi, the former dean, College of Plant Science and Crop Production, Professor Goke Bodunde, Professor Mo Mufta Atayeshe, and Professor Ola Santon. We also appreciate our uh, the former Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development, Professor Clement Adeofu. We appreciate all our other teams and directors that have come to grace this occasion. All heads of units and departments, we all we appreciate you all. Thank you very much for making this occasion a great one. We wish you uh, a safe trip back to your various destinations. Thank you very much.